Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fourth video in the AVR series using the explained mini board, and we will continue with the UART peripheral which we covered in the previous video. We saw how to configure the UART, set the board rate, and how to transmit the data using it. In today's video we will see how to receive the data from UART, and then store it in a buffer. We will use the interrupt to receive the data, so we need to add a few things to our UART configuration. Also the connection will be the same as the previous video, and the data will be sent by the computer. Let's start the microchip studio, and create a new project. Give some name to the project, and click OK. I am using the same ATtiny817 controller. Let's copy the entire code from the previous video, and paste it in our project. I am leaving everything as it is, and just commenting out the transmission part. Let's take a look at the registers again. The receiver data register is where the data will arrive via the UART. Since we are using 8 data bits, the low byte register can store the entire data received. The high byte register holds the ninth data bit, if you are using 9 bit data, and also the error flags, like parity error, frame error, buffer overflow, and the receive complete flag. This receive complete flag is the same as what we saw in the status register. When there is unread data in the receiver register, this flag is set. As I mentioned earlier, we will be using interrupt to receive the data, we need to enable the receive complete interrupt in the control A register. So let's set the 7th bit of the control A register to enable the receive complete interrupt. The rest of the configuration is same. We enable the receiver and transmitter, then set the asynchronous mode with no parity, one stop bit, and 8 data bits. Set the board rate of 115200, and clear the transfer complete flag. Note that we don't need to clear the receive complete flag, as it is automatically cleared when we read the data from the receiver register. Finally we configure the UART pins. Let's define an array of 10 bytes to store the received data, and an index variable to update the position of the data inside the array. To receive the data, we will write an interrupt service routine. The interrupt vector for the UART can be found in the interrupt vector mapping table. Here we have three different interrupt vectors, and we will use the receive complete interrupt. Let's write an ISR function. Here we will copy the data from the receiver register low byte, and store it in the buffer we just defined. Update the index variable so that the new data gets stored at a new position in the buffer. Our buffer can only store 10 bytes, so if the index value is greater than 9, we will reset it to 0. We also need to enable the global interrupt in the main function. Let's build the code now. The build is successful, so let's debug it. Set a breakpoint inside the ISR function, and add the Rx data buffer to the watch. This buffer is located at the address 3E00 hex in the memory location. You can see all the elements of this buffer here, right now they have the value 0. I am going to use the real term to send the data to the MCU. It is configured for the board rate of 115200 with one stop bit and no parity. Let's send the letter A. We have hit the breakpoint. You can see there is no data in the zeroth element of the Rx data buffer right now. Let's step over this statement. Here the data has been stored in the zeroth element. The integer value 65 is the decimal equivalent of the letter A. You can also see this in hex, but the ASCII is not available here. When the value is stored in the buffer, the index variable is also increment. 
we can see its value by adding it to the watch. Right now its value is 1. Let's send another letter B. It is stored in the first element of the buffer, and the index variable is 2 now. So you see how the index value gets updated, and this stores the new data in the next position in the Rx buffer. Let's delete the breakpoint, and reset the debugger. Now I am going to send the entire string. We need to pause the debugger to see the result in the watch. Here we have received the data, and they are the decimal equivalent values of the ASCII characters we sent. You can see the ASCII values by looking at the address where the Rx buffer is located at. Let's go to the address 3E00 hex. Here you can see the ASCII data we sent via the UART. Let's send another string. Here we have received it at the very next position in the memory. Now all the 10 bytes have been received, so the next string we send, should start storing from the beginning of the buffer. Here you can see it. So the UART reception is working fine. We saw how to receive the data using the UART, and how to store it in a buffer. For now you can use it to receive some fixed amount of data. In the upcoming videos, I will release a more flexible library, which will make it easy to receive and handle the received data. This is it for this video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.